Hello, class. This is Mr. Lehman. Right now it's 11 o'clock, Tuesday night. I'm not going to be coming to school tomorrow. Uh, so I wanted to try to record my lesson tonight since I'm not coming in. So that way you can watch and uh, we can keep the pace going and you can keep learning. And I'm not giving you busy work. And uh, we can still do the lab Thursday, Friday, the flame test lab. So here we go. So the sound isn't the best. I think it's on my web. I'm not showing my camera because it's 11:10. I'm tired, and uh, the lighting's not great in my basement. But here I am. Uh, so which element has an electron configuration of 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s1? So uh, throughout the video, feel free to pause as you're trying to figure out answers, and then unpause it when you're ready uh, to see how you did. So remember the one. The two, what I'm, the big numbers are the energy level, uh, the distance from the nucleus, the S, the P, that's the shape of the home, the sub-level we call it, and then the little two, six, and the one, those are, they look like exponents, they're not exponents, they're called superscripts. Those small numbers in the top right-hand corner tell you how many electrons are found in that sub-level. So uh, what I recommend you do here is add up the little numbers, get a grand total, and when I do that, grand total is 19 electrons. So then look in the periodic table and find element 19, which is potassium, K. And that is the electron configuration of element 19, potassium. All right, so first thing I like to do is check page four. So I'm not gonna put the answers on my screen. I don't even think I have the answer key here at home. Uh, so right now on Canvas, I did activate page four answers. So pause this video right now take out your page four and uh, check your work and see how you did and if you need help if you're having questions problems uh, definitely Thursday Friday uh, next Monday great time to reach out to either classmates uh, or reach out to me right I'm here to help you alright so you should have checked your page four answers ready to move on uh, yesterday in class actually it's today but for you since you're watching this Wednesday this was yesterday's work. We filled in this chart and we looked at as energy levels uh, get bigger, first, the second, the third, the fourth, there's more room for electrons. And so the first energy level only has S sublevels, second energy level is bigger, it has S's and P's, third energy level is even bigger, it has S, P's, and D sublevels, and fourth energy level has all four types of sublevels, S, P, D, and F. So if we look at the numbers of electrons, they can go in each uh, sublevel, we add them together. We come to the consensus that first energy level can hold two electrons, the second energy level can hold up to eight, the third energy level can hold up to 18, and the fourth energy level can hold up to 32. All right, so those are key important numbers they need to know moving forward for the rest of the year. And we learned about the off-bow principle. Remember the off-bow principle, German word for building up. Uh, it's the principle of building up, building up our configuration. We always start from the ground, right? When you're building construction, you always start ground level and work your way up. And so we're always going to start at the lowest energy level electrons first. And you got this flow chart. You can use, use this flow chart on a quiz, on a test. So 1s comes first, and then a 2s, and then a 2p, and then a 3s, and a 3p, 4s. And yeah, we used this in class yesterday. And that's my dog barking. He misses me. It's 11, 12. He's like, Dad, come on up here. Feed me. Take me out. You gotta wait about 10 or 15 minutes, Stewie. Sorry, buddy. He's deaf, he can't even hear me, so I feel bad. All right, so electrons always fill the lowest energy levels first, sublevels first. So here's a good chart. Uh, this is right from your textbook, figure 5.18 textbook. And this goes, look, y-axis, we got increasing energy. And so we go 1s fills up with two and then the 2s fills up a 2 and then look at the 2p, 2p's next and notice there's three boxes there because there's three orbitals and each one can hold two electrons, so six electrons can go here and then next lowest energy sub-level is the 3s and then the 3p and then look, uh oh 4s is a little bit lower in the energy scale than 3d so try when I say energy level, it doesn't. that's not absolute uh, that 4s, we're comparing 4s to 3s, that is really the distance from the nucleus. So really that 4s is saying, hey, these electrons are farther away than the 3s. So just because an electron is in the 4s doesn't mean it has more energy than 3d. That's actually, it's not true. So 4s electrons come next, and then the 3d electrons come after that, and then we just keep going up, zigzagging, 
and that is where we get the flow chart from. So always use the flow chart to help you. Uh, here's a simplified version of that. So by energy level, we can see uh, the order. All right, so we're going to use our periodic table today. So if you were in school, you picked up a copy of the periodic table from me. If, uh, if you don't have a copy of the periodic table at home, you can just watch me label it. And once I label mine, you can take like a screenshot of it. Or you can print out a copy of the periodic table and label it as we go here. So I will pause the video now, go find your periodic table, and come on back. All right, you're back. Congratulations, you found a periodic table, hopefully. I want to show you how the flow chart is really just the periodic table. We're going to turn the periodic table into a flow chart. So I could just have you look at this and explain it, but I think it's good to actually fill out a periodic table. So here we go. Here's my periodic table. Let me get a little thicker ink. And all right, so hydrogen has one electron. Grab a pencil. Uh, if you have four different colors of pencil, that would be fantastic, or maybe thin markers. So if you don't have markers or colored pencils handy, pause it, try to go find some. Or if you're doing this on a computer, uh, it'll be a little bit tough switching back and forth, but you can try it. So here we go. Uh, hydrogen has one electron, and we're not going to label every single box, but starting out, we're going to label a lot. So hydrogen is one electron, we'll always go on the 1s, and that'll make it 1s2. And then helium has a second electron, and that'll also go in the 1s region, sublevel. And that second electron will fill up the 1s, and so its electron configuration would end in 1s2. All right, next comes lithium. Lithium adds a third electron. The next electron goes in the 2s. So lithium's third electron would cause it to have an electron configuration that ends in 2s1. And then beryllium adds a fourth electron. That fourth electron would go in the 2s, making it 2s2. So right now, at this point in time, beryllium is 1s2, 2s2. And that's it. And then I'm going to grab a different colored pencil here. I'm going to use my blue stylus or blue marker. Uh, boron. Boron has a fifth electron. Boron will add an electron, and this fifth electron will go in the 2p, giving the 2p one electron. And then carbon adds a sixth electron. That six electron will go in the 2p, making a 2p2. And then nitrogen adds another electron, and so it has three in the 2p. Oxygen's fourth electron, or oxygen's eighth electron, will add another electron to the 2p, making a 2p4. Fluorine's ninth electron would go in the 2p. That would give the 2p uh, sublevel five electrons. And then neon, its uh, tenth electron, would give the 2p six electrons. Sorry, still. All right. So now grab your, your uh, original pencil, your S pencil, because look, we have electron 11. And after the 2p, look here, we're 1s, 2s, 2p. Next up is the 3s. All right, so sodium's 11th electron goes in a 3s, making a 3s1. And my wife is trying to sleep. She's going to get really mad because I'm not getting Stewie. And he's probably barking and waking her up. Sorry. Sorry, wife. Love you. All right, here we go. So magnesium's 12th electron makes a 3s2. Look, you see a pattern. Hopefully you see a pattern. And then can you predict right now where aluminum's electron would go? 13th electron would go in the... 3p1, you guessed it. Great job, guys. All right, and then silicon, we'll make it 3p2. And then as we keep adding electrons, they keep going to 3p, and eventually noble gas argon will make it 3p6. And look at where we are here. I bet you can probably guess without even looking at your flow chart. Guess what electron sublevel comes next? Where will potassium's electron go? That's right, the 4s. 4s1. 4s2. Oh my goodness. But look here, we're in a new region of the periodic table. What is this region? Well, count how many blocks wide it is. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 blocks wide. You know what? The D, the D sublevel has 10 electrons. It can hold 10 electrons. And let's look at the flow chart. Look at that. After the 4s comes the 3d. So the next region on the periodic table, the d's are always one energy level behind. So we go 3s, 3p, 4s, it's not the 4d, we're going back to the third energy level, and that would be 3d1, titanium's 22nd electron, we'll go 3d2, and then we keep adding, I'm not going to label every single box now, we keep adding electrons, and then by the time we get to zinc, zinc's 30th electron will make it 3d3. Alright, and uh, from here, 
we have, uh, guess what comes next? 2P1, 3P1, gallium. Gallium's electron will go in the 4P, making a 4P1. And then elements 31 through 36 will add electrons to the 4P. And by the time we get the noble gas uh, krypton, element 36, it'll fill up the 4P with 6. And then from here, guess what? I'm not even going to. Here's the 5S. This is the 6S. This is the 7S. Uh, down this row, yttrium element 39 starts to 4D. Lanthanum starts to 5D. And actinium starts to 6D. And as we go across, 39 through 48, we're going to fill up the D, 4D. 57 and it sort of jumps around a little bit here if we have more time I'll show you some exceptions to the rule but really we get the 5d1 here and here the bottom row we get the 6d and 6d is filling up and then look at our p block here we go underneath 4p1 indium element 49 we'll start adding electrons to the 5p and thallium element 81 we'll start adding electrons to the 6p and then our elements found below 113 to 118 uh, that exist in the lab, they would add electrons to the 7P. All right, so we have everything but this bottom region. Now the bottom region uh, is where we find the F. Look at how many blocks wide it is. It's 14 blocks wide. And so that top row on the bottom, let me grab my black pen here. So the top row. 58 through 71 is where we fill up the 4F. So you have 4F1, 4F2, 4F3, and then by the time we get over here, we get the 4F14. And then uh, thorium, that's a pretty cool element name, thorium after Thor, is where we start adding to the 5F. All right, so 5F1 is 14 blocks wide, so by, by the time we get to Laurentium, we uh, add 5F14. So different regions of the periodic table, we call group one and group two these metals. We call this the S block. The S block. And then in the middle section of our periodic table, groups three through 12, this is where we add electrons to the D sublevel. We call this the D block. And then if we look over here, elements uh, in groups 13 through 18, except for helium, this makes up the P block. Oops, got too close to the top of the screen there. Sorry about that. And then down here at the bottom, I don't have much room to label it, but down here at the bottom, we call that the F block. All right, so if you, if my writing is a little bit too blurred there, too jumbled, look back at this. This is exactly what we just labeled. I showed you how to uh, label the different regions of the periodic table. So if you follow the atomic number in order, left to right, that is the flow chart. That is the off bow principle. All right, so we start with 1s, 2s, 2p, 3s, 3p, 4s, 3d, 4p, 5s, 4d, 5p, 6s. We got the 5d, but the 4f, it's a little bit tricky right there. And if we had more time, we would talk a little bit more about that. But we're just trying to get the basics of this. And uh, you can see how the flow chart comes from this. All right, I want to show one last thing here. Actually, let's a couple questions, see if you can apply what we learned. Uh, question number one, which element has an electron configuration that ends in 5P3? Which one ends in 5P3? Pause it, try to get an answer, look at your periodic table. Unpause it. 5P is right here. So 5P1, 5P2, 5P3. If you said antimony, ding, 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 correct. You win a million dollars. No, you don't. But congratulations. Yes, 5P3 would be antimony. Question number two. Which element has an electron configuration that ends in 4D2? Pause the video. Try to answer it. Unpause it when you're done. All right, welcome back. 4D2. 4D2 is right here. All right, 4D1, 4D2. That's zirconium. Element 40. Zirconium is the answer. So if you got that one right, fantastic job. And then question three, pause it, try to answer this. Which element has an electron configuration that ends in 5F3? 5F3. Pause it. Unpause it. All right, welcome back. Here we go. 5F3 is down at the bottom. 5F1, 5F2, 5F3. Sorry, I got cut off there a little bit. That's uranium. Uranium element 92. All right, so that's the big topic today. I want to do a shorthand with you, too. All right, last topic, electron shorthand. 
uh, sometimes writing these really long ones can be uh, tedious, time consuming. And so uh, noble gases are really, really important to us. Noble gases are special because they are inert. What does inert mean? That means that they do not react with other elements. So they are inert, they do not react with other elements. Therefore, what does that mean? That means that they are very stable. That means that they don't react with other elements and that means that they're not gonna gain or lose electrons. So if they don't gain or lose electrons, then that means that they will always have the same number of electrons. And that means we can build off of them because they always have the same electrons in the same locations when they're in a ground state. So we can start with the closest noble gas to an element and build off of it. So on your periodic table, now you just wrote on your periodic table, it gets a little messy, but the noble gases, the ones that we're allowed to start with are in group 18. So group one is on the left. We go left to right. There's 18 groups on the periodic table. Group 18 is this highlighted region. So helium, neon, argon, krypton, xenon, radon, those are the six noble gases that we can use for shortcuts. So uh, let's take a look at strontium. So if I say, what is the longhand configuration for strontium? You would say 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d10, 4p6, 5s2. All right, that's a lot. That's 38 electrons. What we can do instead is we can go backwards and say, what is the closest noble gas to strontium? It is krypton. And what we can do, once again, we're doing strontium, we can start with the closest noble gas, krypton, put that in brackets, and that takes care of, that takes care of the 36 electrons leading up to it. And Krypton's electron configuration ends in 4p6, right? Four, this is 2p, 3p, 4p. It ends in 4p6. So what comes after Krypton? It's just these two electrons. So we could just write Krypton and then write 5s2, and that's it. We're done. The shorthand configuration for strontium is Krypton 5s2. Let me erase all this craziness. And let's do one more. Uh, let's say, what is the electron configuration for? Let's not do that one. It gets a little crazy. Uh, let's do let's do barium. Actually, we just did strontium. Let's do a different one here. Let's do chromium, or let's do manganese. Manganese is a good one. Sorry, I'm indecisive. So manganese has 25 electrons. All right. So if I'm saying that should be a minus sign. Not a one. All right. So if I say, all right, what's the longhand configuration for magnesium? You'd list every or manganese. You'd say every single electron: one s two, two s two, two p six, three s two, three p six, four s two, three d one, two three four five, three d five is what you would end with there. If I say, what is the shorthand? You'd go backwards and say, what's the closest noble gas to manganese? It's element eighteen, argon. So we put argon symbol in brackets, and then what comes after argon? Uh, electron 19 and 20 are found in the 4s, and electrons uh, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25 go into 3d, so it'd be 3d5. So that is the shorthand noble gas configuration for manganese. Uh, and what we're going to see in our chemical reaction unit is a lot of elements will gain or lose electrons to become like the closest noble gas. Like potassium is a very reactive metal. It has one outer electron and it'll lose that electron very easily. And if it loses one electron, that would give it the same electron configuration as argon, which would make it super, super stable, very, very stable. So we'll talk all about that in unit five. So that was the lesson for today. I hope you enjoyed it. What I'd like you to do now is work on pages six and seven. Pages six and seven. That is your homework. All right. And uh, I'm not going to collect it yet. So page four, he checked it. So page six and seven, we just did page, actually, yeah. So periodic table is page five in your packet. I forgot to tell you that. So if you're looking for a periodic table, I should have told you that. My fault. So page six and seven, uh, that's your work right now. I'm not going to collect it from you because I still imagine you might have some struggles. So uh, at some point in the future, I might ask you to submit that. But this is what you should do for the rest of the class. And do the best you can. If you have questions, that is perfectly natural right now. Uh, but do the best you can, and I will come back and see you soon.